Our next uh, Lightning speaker recently joined Red Hat as an enterprise agile transformation coach, working for both private and public sector clients. She's been an independent consultant, an instructor, and teacher helping teams work together more effectively. She started out nearly 20 years ago coding, testing, and debugging COBOL systems, so she's always got a job with the state. And today she's going to talk to us about the many ways to iterate. Please welcome Kristen Morton. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for dating me there. He didn't even try and take off the 10 years on that one for me. So, um, I also have a phone and notes and the unfortunate position of being between you guys and lunch, I think. So is there somebody after me? Okay, good. It's not me. So I also have notes because there were some great presentations this morning that I pivoted some of my content a little bit. So no slides and a little bit of notes to keep it brief, okay? My background, uh, as you said, is I started out back in the day as a COBOL developer in the Hartford, Connecticut area. So getting out of university late December 98, we all wanted to get into something sexy like web development, okay? Most of us ended up going into 20-year-old legacy COBOL systems. So the struggle of the legacy system and the modernization is always real. Um, my goal at that point became to get into object-oriented programming. Okay? Um, around this time, Agile is also becoming a thing. Okay? The Agile Manifesto is being published in 2001. It's being socialized. It's being productized at the same point. Okay? So I was on delivery teams going through really awful agile implementations, okay? Really awful. So people, when they look at me as an enterprise agile coach, they're like, oh, when you found agile, it must have been rainbows and puppy dogs and everything was great. And I was like, no, I hated it. Hated everything about it. I was an introverted software developer, okay? Being exposed to really bad agile, okay? No change in the way we work whatsoever, but basically do a daily stand-up, do a lessons learned and go faster while you're doing it. Okay, I love impossible missions, but let's be pragmatic. Okay, so it was a few years, okay, before I really had the benefit of getting onto what I would call smaller agile teams, teams that were actually allowed to work in an agile fashion. Teams where we were allowed to determine our way of working. Okay, working at very large insurance companies, working in the financial industry, working in the government, okay, we are very behind in our project management practices, okay. Technology has rapidly advanced, so go back to the immovable force of the government, right. Technology has moved really fast. Project management hasn't really moved very much, okay. A lot of our project management practices are industrial revolution era practices, Okay, where we are just better smelling horses, okay, that need to be managed, that need to be told what to do, that all of the important decisions need to be made at the top and filtered down to the people doing the work. Okay, those practices are based on resource efficiency. It's based on the assumption that software development is a simple, deterministic effort. Okay. One of the things I've loved so far this morning is I haven't heard the word resource or head count once, okay? I love that, but when we go back to our desk, sometimes what happens? We start talking about the resources and the head count, right? So I love that I haven't heard that from you guys yet this morning. That's been awesome, okay? I've been one of those resources. I've been the head count. You can stand it for a certain amount of time, but it gets very dehumanizing, okay? It's very demoralizing. The way we've been treated in very traditional, plan-based project management doesn't consider us to be people. It considers us to be a number, okay? Uh, Eduardo slides maybe even sadder when I saw people referred to as property, okay? Um, we need to make sure our project management practices are advancing, okay? They're a little bit stuck, okay? We had some uh, 90s, we had Lean Six Sigma pop out, Right, as an attempt, I see some people smiling. I probably have some PMPs I'm offending the heck out of here and some Lean Six Sigma certified people. But it was a good attempt to try and say, listen, the times are changing, technology is changing, traditional plan-based methodology worked better when we were dealing with structured procedural languages. Now we're in the world of object-oriented. Now we're in the world of microservices, okay? We don't need to do these big things up front. And it's foolish of us to try and do so. 
right? Software development is inherently creative, okay? We're looking for flow efficiency versus resource efficiency, okay? So we need to take these advances. We need to take the opportunity that technology has provided us to advance our project management practices as well. This is where Agile and Lean is really starting to be applied, right? To try and advance some of those processes in addition to trying to affect the culture change we've all been referring to. It's really hard to just plan culture change, but we need to start planning right, for our values and time learning, for our values and principles to come together to vent the silos, okay, that have been created over the last 30, 40 years with our very traditional project management practices, vent the silos, let people work together, let knowledge workers shine, get the constraints out of the system. The system is broken, right? This gentleman referred to it earlier. The system is broken. It absolutely is, and most agile coaches, most enterprise people, I'm sure most of the people that spoke this morning have referred to themselves as Neo from the Matrix because it's cool. Um, we like that. But basically, you know, in that movie, he knew something wasn't right. I think most of us, the change agents in the room today, the people that have been up there speaking, we've always known that this traditional, traditional plan-based way isn't right. It doesn't allow us to do what we need to do as knowledge workers. You hired me to be good at what I'm good at. You brought me into a system that's constraining me, okay? That's dehumanizing me, treating me as a resource, treating me as a number, okay? That is really important, all right, to go back to our values and our principles, drive the behaviors we demonstrate. To me, culture is the behaviors we demonstrate every day. Okay, if we have different values and principles, we have different missions and goals, our behaviors sometimes set us up to be at odds with each other. Just because we're in a different department, because I'm a project manager, because you're a developer, sets us up to be at odds with each other. It's a broken system, okay? And so on my software development career, I realized as I was getting into Agile, as I was learning more about lean, I was getting into systems thinking, I'm getting into lean change management, I'm getting into all these amazing frameworks, discipline agile, okay? To say, these things will actually help us change the system around the people, right? Somebody alluded to it earlier as well. The people are not usually the limiting factor when we're looking at delivery. It's usually the system around the people. Right, so let's change the system. How do we change the system? Agile and Lean are attempting to do that, right? Agile is saying, you know, software developers and engineers back in 2001, ski trip in Utah, unhappy with what they're seeing. So the big picture of what they tried to come out with, the Agile Manifesto, get the people doing the work as close to the users as possible and let them get it done. That's the whole essence of the Agile Manifesto. Let the people work together. Take out the levels of proxies, right? Take out the really overblown process that really causes us to not trust each other, right? It's a very distrustful system, right? We've gotta have documentation. It's gotta come down from the top. We've gotta, it's just, it sets us up for a really bad, unsustainable working culture. Let's change the system. Right. How do we do that? I loved all the talks this morning. You guys were awesome. This felt like more of an Agile conference than some of the Agile conferences I've been to. Okay? And I can tell you guys, like, you are really well-timed. I had the, uh, the benefit of going to the Capitol yesterday with some of the AGL Association to talk to people in IT in the state of California. Okay? And they're struggling right now with some big perceived failure learning opportunities. Okay, there's some great learning opportunities going on right now with some er experimentation around Agile. The shame would be if we did not learn from those things, okay? <laughs> Failures happen, right? Fail fast, fail forward. The shame would be if we just held our heads down and said, well, right? Let's learn from those things. Agile and lean, I know some people when I say Agile, they go, oh. Agile, agile, what does it mean? What does it mean to me? The opportunity here is to say, let's change the system. 
okay? It's bigger, right, than one approach, than one framework, than me one methodology, right? Do we use Scrum or Safe? I don't really care. That's not our problem right now. Well, I do care, but we'll take that offline. <laughs> I have lots of opinions. You can talk to me about that offline. Okay, it's bigger than that. It's acknowledging that, yes, we want to put knowledge workers back in control. We want them to own their way of working, that we need to change this way of working. Okay, to get to a more sustainable place. One of my friends from Agile 6 yesterday said, you know what, like we're starting to get this right and the opportunities and the successes that we're seeing in the federal government, some of the wonderful opportunities that you guys have been illustrating this morning, we are seeing successes with changing our way of working, with changing our mindset, right? With syncing up, with venting the silos across departments, right? Buy in from the top, that stuff is all super critical Okay, to changing the system. Agile and Lean are just bigger picture sets of values and principles to help us explore these practices. And back to all the bad Agile implementations I was ever in is because we were trying to jam in practices without actually changing our way of working. It just doesn't work that way. Okay, and you guys, I would imagine, whether it was here or somewhere else, have seen that or been a part of it, been exposed to it. Okay. So when people say Agile, Agile coaches, you'll see even on LinkedIn, everybody who's got Agile in their title is debating, should we take Agile out of our title? It's kind of a controversial buzzword at this point with these perceived failure learning opportunities, okay? Don't get hung up on the word. Don't let a bad experience with Agile turn you off of Agile altogether. It would be a real shame to do that. Right, because the experiments, the learning, to, the opportunity to be brave, okay, to change the system. There's lots of great frameworks out there to help you do it. Where do we start, right? Lots of great frameworks and lots of great reference implementations of these things. You guys are in a great position. You have the opportunity to stand on the shoulders of the giants that came before you, okay? The financial industry, right, federal government, insurance, all the very risk-averse industries are going through this together, all right? There's great patterns of success out there. We don't have to reinvent the wheel, okay? So, for anybody, like I said, who's a little twitchy, when you see Agile in my name, okay, in my title, take it as an opportunity, okay? That's my message, there's no slides, nothing fancy. I have a lot of frameworks, I have a lot of experience with different things. You guys have covered some great practices today, I don't need to cover those. If you have any questions, please let me know during lunch, and thank you for your time. <laughs>